All right, well, welcome. My name is Andrus. This is the Baking Steel Test Kitchen. We've got Chef Craig behind me on the cameras. Um, we'll be making a cameo at some point. And today we are talking pizza dough with beer in it. Right here, night shift. See this? Um, Whirlpool, this is like a, just a pale ale it's in our fridge. We serve this in our pizza classes. We thought, let's make dough with beer in it because it does a couple of things. It adds some really nice flavor. It makes it very unique. And um, it, that, really, that's it. It just adds a different texture to it. And so we know in our pizza dough, we have flour, salt, water, and yeast. That water has got no flavor in it. it. It serves a major purpose. However, you can basically substitute out that liquid for just about anything. And today we're going to use beer. We've done champagne, we've done coffee, we've done Seven Up, Sprite, coconut water. Um, what else have we tried? Spinach juice, beet juice. Oh, juices like juices like spinach or beet, and it adds a really great like color um, and flavor to it. Um, squid ink. I don't think we've tried that one yet, but um, there's I mean there's really all different types of liquids. Fish oil, right? Just and I know people put herbs and things in their doughs. But in any case, our, our um, mojo is we're always trying to experiment, take an adventure with your cooking. And beer is really fun. Um, find your favorite beer. I personally don't drink beer, but I know this night shift is awesome. And I know a lot of people um, love this stuff. So in any case, let's get to it. Let's get right into it. I thought today what we'd do a couple different things. We're going to make a dough again, like we did last week, um, show you how we do it with the beer, and then we'll just get into what kind of pizza would you make with beer dough. Um, so we'll try a couple of different things and see what happens, all right? So you guys know us, we know we are scientists, mad scientists, and scientists measure their ingredients with a scale because we need to, to dial this in. The beer, beer to flour ratio is critical. So we need to really dial it in, and we find the only way to do that is with a digital scale. This is a brand called My Way, and it's pretty nice, pretty accurate. So for all the um, ingredients, we've got flour, salt, yeast, and beer, okay? I'm going to uh, show you what I do. Everything's been pre-measured. I'm going to take my dry ingredients and put them into my bowl, and I'm gonna whisk them all out separately first, then we combine them. Typically, I'll dissolve my salt in my, um, my water, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just gonna put it in my, my flour and whisk it. Okay, now what I'm gonna do, very skillfully, is open my beer. Now, this is two cups of beer. Um, so I technically should measure this and dial it in. Um, to, because um, I, I only need a cup and a half of beer in my dough. So, but I thought what I would do, I'm not going to measure it. I might go a little heavy. Smell. Ah, yes. Smell that? Do you guys smell that at all? Um, is there an app for that? I'm just going to pour my beer right in to my dough. I'm not going to do quite two cups. I know I said measure it, but I'm going to go a little heavy. So it's going to be a very wet dough because I'm going to make some breadsticks or something with this. And now I'm just going to kind of smells like beer. I'm just going to mix this up. It's very foamy, very cool. Once I get enough of that liquid of that beer inside, I'm going to um, knead it right into, around the countertop here. And what I mean by that, I'm just gonna get all these dry clumps of flour and beer out of it. And I do that by using my hands. And you can really smell, can you smell that, Chef? That good. aroma, it's amazing. Is this in a good spot here? Can you see this? Okay. Um, I just kind of lightly press it in. Bench scrapers come in really handy. Just press it up. And you know, feel free to try any kind of beer. 
your favorite, you know, robust flavors like a dark, like a, um, a Guinness. I think we've tried that before too, haven't we? And that, it'll give it a little bit more color. Someone's gonna ask about the yeast content in the beer versus, you know, do I need to add yeast into my dough? To answer that question, don't pay attention to that. It does not make a difference at all. Just use the, um, I use about a gram and a half of yeast. And this is again, super wet. It's done, okay? And now what I'm gonna do is put this dough back into what we call these Cambro delis. I've got covers for these, which is amazing. I'm gonna make this airtight, okay? And I'm gonna cover it up for about 12 hours or until I go to bed tonight. And then I'll put this into the refrigerator overnight and then tomorrow or the next day, I can make some pizzas out of it or bread or whatever we decide. Um, so anyway, we did this yesterday. I'm gonna rinse my hand off really quick. Dude, I'm gonna rinse it. Um, I'm back, I'm back. Um, I did this yesterday for class today. So uh, this has been kind of overnight proofing in the refrigerator. So I did 12 hours on the counter and then maybe 12 or 14 hours in the fridge. I made a dough ball out of this this morning, which is what we have in this. By the way, these are called, what are these called? Dough trays. Dough trays. These go, this fits in my fridge out back. They have smaller ones for home, um, home fridge that can hold like four doughs, which I highly, highly recommend. In any case, this dough has been sitting since about six o'clock this morning. And, right here you see this i'm going to do is um make a pizza now with this right chef yeah. um so you guys can see i'm gonna put some flour down boom do we want to get to some questions first I think we're good or not or just do it afterwards do it afterwards yeah my dough goes down into the flour you can see this here right um and what i'm gonna do is it around a little bit and i'm gonna lightly just press this out Boom, boom, boom. I use a lot of flour so um, it doesn't get stuck on my countertop. You can see this dough, it's been fermenting or proofing for like 24 hours, so it's pretty, pretty loose already. But the longer it sits, the more loose it actually gets. This is about a 250 gram dough ball. I'm just kind of lightly stretching it. You can see it's starting to shape. So now I'm gonna pause for a second and tell you what's going on behind the scenes. I've got my, my baking steel in my oven over here. Shout out to Monogram. Um, at 450 degrees Fahrenheit for a good hour. And I want those steels to get super hot. Really important. Um, the dough's ready to rock and roll. And now I've got some cheese in the freezer that I'm gonna pull out in just a second. Um, my pizza peel, again, this is a critical piece of equipment. Anybody's getting the pizza stuck at home, usually it's gonna be because of this next step, which is lightly loop up your peel. And I use flour, I might use some semolina flour. I don't use cornmeal because I think it burns a little bit too fast. But those are my ball bearings. Once I get my ball bearings on, I can place my dough on top. I'm gonna give this one last stretch here. I can place it right on top of my peel, just like this. And now before I do any cheese on this thing, I'm gonna give it a slide. Make sure it slides like a hockey puck. You see how this is still loose? That's critical. It's gotta be important, it's gotta be loose. If it's not, then what I'll do is I'll pick up that corner that might be getting stuck, and I'll stick some more semolina flour on it. Right, and those are my ball bearings. Make sure this thing is loose like a hockey puck. Comprende, and this dough is bubbly. It smells amazing. All right, guys, can you see the bubbles on that? Really nice. Um, so once I get that done, so I thought with the, with the beer, with the beer dough, I'm gonna just do like cheese and maybe some basil at the end, right? So what, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put my oven on to broil. Might be a little premature. I'm gonna now 
grade some cheese right on top. And I might even put a little bit of oil around it. What do you think of that idea, Chef? Oil? Love it. Love it. Olive oil. A little bit of oil, right? Um, I'm going to use some Parm Reggiano, which is a, an aged cheese. I think it's like 24 months, so it's hard. I stick this on the bottom layer. It's like a secret weapon of flavor. Layer those flavors in there if you can, right? Um, I got the, I got some of that in there. Now I'm going to take some, my Wonder Shredder. Can I see that? Low moisture mozzarella. It's a whole milk and it's not frozen, quite frozen, but it's hard because we have it in the freezer. Put a little cheese on. All right, and now I'm going to take some fresh mozzarella and see, boom. And what I'll do with this, I'm going to chunk it off by hand. I'm not measuring my cheese, but I'm keeping in mind that less is more on top. So a little a couple of cheese, a couple of chunks. And it looks pretty awesome. Um, before I do anything else, I'm going to do this thing and make sure it's sliding again. See how it's sliding back and forth? I'm confident now that I can go into a hot oven at 500 degrees and slide this, you know, back to front into the oven. So you watch how I do this. You remember I turned my broiler on. My broiler should be on now, it is. Back to front, just like so. Boom. Now what I'm gonna do is get a timer. So I don't have a timer anywhere. Please don't get a timer on the, uh, sorry, sir. He's trying to hold a camera steady and grab a timer and he got it, boom. Amazing, amazing talent. So I'm gonna put this on for about 145. What I'm doing is to make sure, because the broiler's on, I don't wanna get too dark on top because then I might burn it. So we find in my oven two minutes is pretty ideal at 500 degrees with that broiler on. Let's get to some questions. Is this basically the 72 hour dough subbing out water? For Correct. Food? This is a basically the 72 hour dough recipe, substituting out the water, adding in beer. Um, that's it. And I own, this is a 24 hour dough. I did not have three days because we made this dough yesterday. So it's a 24 hour dough, which is still gonna be very good. Not as good as 72, but still good. What kind of flour? Bread flour. Um, if you've been following us, if you're new to us, we find in a home oven, we like organic bread flour on a baking steel. There's other types of flour. We've done a lot of testing on it. We just find it to be ideal. But bread flour also works. Have you tried 72 hours with the beer? Yes, totally has tried 72 hours, no problem. Um, it definitely breaks down the glutens even further and really tasty. I'm gonna peek and I can smell something going here. A little nervous. Ah, good, good, good sniff there, huh? Um, I've got a lot of color on top. I don't, can you see in here? Okay, okay, I'll move it to the bottom. Sure. I've got two steels and to protect it, um, you guys can see what's going on here. It's a little bit too, a little bit too dark. So I'm going to move it to the bottom steel just so it doesn't get darker on top. Turn my broiler off. And that's like kind of like a, I just had to adapt to what was going on. And I can cook for two more minutes. Um, that's why I used the, bro the timer with the broiler. I could smell the, the, um, the bubbles were kind of charring up a little bit too fast. So I turned the broiler off, but I also moved it down. And what that's gonna do is protect that top from getting too dark. Now, if I don't add two steels, just be more mindful of your timer. Don't put it on two minutes, put it on one minute. If I had caught that earlier, I could have just turned the broiler off sooner. Uh, my bad, didn't happen. I'm still gonna eat it. Question for anybody, I don't drink alcohol, but can I drink, eat the pizza? Huh. Great question. Great question. Anybody, can anybody answer that? You have about five minutes. Google that. I would say it dies when you cook it. It's like cooking out, because you cook out the alcohols, my yeah. guess. In five minutes though. You can cook out wine in like 12 seconds in a pan. Yeah, that's true. But it also, sure. it also cooked out probably 24 hours though, if anything. I guess. Sure. Anybody, can anybody answer that? We'll see. 
A lot of people want to know what the ingredients are. I mean, how many ingredients for the dough? Weight of flour, water, salt, and yeast. Great question. So let's let's go through that. Um, five hundred gram. The ingredients of this dough we just made with beer. It was five hundred grams of bread flour. Um, it was sixteen grams of sea salt. Is one and a half grams of active dry yeast, flesh mints, and then we used one and a half cups of Whirlpool Night Shift beer. And if you don't have this style beer brand, try your favorite brand. Um, it's going to be fun. Can you make bread with it? And you can make bread. Um, in fact, I've got extra dough here. Um, I can make bread sticks. I could make bread. You can make really, you name it, anything. Um, same, it's, it's, a, it's a dough essentially, right? You can make fried dough with it if you wanted to. Uh, this is really uh, use your imagination. So look at this. It's amazing. I'm going to pull this out now. You guys can take a close up. It's really gorgeous. Um, you guys can see here. Cheese, pizza. The bottom is cooked really nice. It's been about three and a half minutes. Um, it's really pretty. Um, and now I could, I could finish this off with some, some basil or you name it before I slice it and I have, a, I have some fresh basil here. One way to get your greens, right? Let's put some basil on top. So I'm going to use full leaves. I'm feeling like a full leaves today. Really smells nice. That's it. If you want, you can always finish this off with a little bit more cheese, right? And there it is, our night shift beer pizza. Amazing. It's gorgeous too. You see this? Yeah. The nice thing about a baking steel pizza, by the way, boom. It's just cool. It's really pretty. It smells amazing. I can actually smell the beer in the gas. It's good. Let's get some more questions. Anybody else have a question? We're here for you. Do you ever use a dough docker? Yeah, great question. Do I ever use a dough docker? And what a dough docker is, it will, it, I will use it, for example, for bar pizza, or if I don't want the bubbles. And what a dough docker does is it literally just kind of knocks some holes in it, kind of like aerates it, like you've seen those aerators in your yard. Um, I don't think we have one, do we have one here? We might, whatever. Um, just kind of roll your dough with it. I would only use that if I was doing like a bar pizza. But I like, these bubbles that we have. So these bubbles, if I dock the dough, you're not going to get those bubbles. Ah, there you go. Boom. Dough docker, right? Kind of just do this. Kids like this, the Play-Doh. Vodka? Oh. Could you use vodka? Ooh, good question. Yeah, sure. Why not? Um, I have not tried it. I think vodka is used a lot in like pie doughs. It is stuff, used right? a lot. Yeah. I know that's, yes, I think Kenji did that, right? Something oh. like the evaporation rate or whatever. Um, yeah. Try it. Um, just be cautious. There's alcohol in there and there's flames with heat. I don't see a problem, but just be cautious. How about dun, 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 dun. different types of flowers, like an all-purpose or double O? Anything else you could use in here? Um, great question. Someone asked, can I use different flowers? So we found, we love bread flour. This is an organic flour. We, we found from Central Millings. It's a high gluten flour. Um, King Arthur makes a great version of it. Jamie's Mill does. There's a lot of different brands. However, sometimes we, we don't like that flour. We can't get it. So we're using all purpose. Um, so experiment. Go on an adventure. Try different. Mix and match. Take some bread flour. Take some all purpose flour. Combine them. 50% um, of each. And see, you know, I would just encourage you guys to try different things, different styles, until you find that one that you just love. Why not any sauce? Well, that's a great question. I wasn't feeling it today. I was not feeling that this beer dough needed tomato sauce. Because I think I'm going to get... Um, or more of the beer flavor, yeah. More of the beer flavor without the sauce. That's me. Um, it's one more thing to kind of mask that nuance of beer. Because it's not going to be overpowering by any means. You're going to taste the uh, smell... Uh, a nuance of that beer inside the dough. That's it. Last question for people who weren't 
here before class started. Why did you freeze the cheese? Ah, oh, great question. Why did I freeze the cheese? I knew I was making pizza. I knew by freezing it for a few minutes first that it would harden the cheese, but it also would slow the cooking process down. And if you can get a close-up here of the cheese, it's not overly brown. All you can see is the, the dough, but the cheese itself is creamy, and that because we froze it first. And it just melted a little nicer, um, and we shredded it ourselves. That's all. It just slowed the cooking process down. Awesome, you guys rock. Thank you, guys. If you're watching us on YouTube, subscribe to our channel. We hope you like it as well. Um, any questions, drop them below. We look forward to next week's class. You guys rock. Thank you for joining us.